Technology brings us closer together, even when we're far apart. Google Developer Groups host meetup events for local technologists to connect, learn, and grow with others in their area. The project I'm mostly proud of would be teaching introduction to programming to seven girls in my hometown. In the JDJ, I used to attend various workshops, like it was on Firebase, Android, Cloud. Everyone is learning from someone else. We started to meet twice a week for a long time, learning Google Cloud, amazing experience. After joining Accenture as a software engineer, I started to share my journey in Medium, podcasts, and talks at online boot camps. My talk inspired one of community members a lot. So I mentored him to start his latter path. And one year later, at the same conference, he was giving a talk at the same stage. One member of our community moved from being a DJ at our event to a developer in the first leading bank in the country. When we do events that impact a lot of people, we are bringing opportunity to our region. So a lot of investors, a lot of startups, they will start to see opportunities here. Hi everyone, good evening, uh, I hope you can hear me, let me confirm that, alright awesome, you can hear me, that's beautiful, so it's a nice evening here, wherever I join it from, it has to be evening as well, my name is Trusty Corey. And I'm joining this space this evening, two faced. One, as a member of GDG APA, Google Developers Group. And I'm representing the Bonds team today to share Web3 knowledge and educational content to everyone. And how Bonds, as a Web3 development platform, can help developers build the apps faster. And of course, the Web3 in general, what it's all about. And what's the noise about Web3? All right, sorry about that. Yeah, it's definitely um, network, but well, I think we were, we're good now. We're definitely good now. All right, so this is actually a very brief, and it's going to be quite concise. A moment, please. Let me share my screen, and then we'll take us through what we all have for today. So we're going to be tackling some questions around Web3 and how developers can begin to transition or perhaps how developers can understand what Web3 is all about and what the noise about blockchain is really about and decide if they can if they want to jump right into it or decide if they want to hold on and jump right later. So we are going to go straight away um you can see my screen correct 
I would just have to make it a little bit bolder. So we we'll all get to be on the same um, pace. All right, nice. So becoming a front end plus uh, with the developer. So this conversation, though, is targeted to everyone who writes code, but it has to. There's going to be some focus on those who are writing front end and how those in front end can make the transition quite easily. So for those of us who are right now on the on the, on, on the live stream, you can definitely ask your questions. But those who would later get to see this, you can definitely drop your questions on the GDG community group. I will take it up from there and get so can support you to understand it better and how Web3 and blockchain applies to whatever field you have. So even if you are a front, uh, an Android person, even if you're a non-coding person, Web3 definitely affects everybody. So let's get started. So my name is Trusty Queen, like I mentioned. Um, I'm part of the GDG about community group and also part of the, the team at Bonds, supporting developers in the Web3 space. So this is actually going to be quite an interactive section, something that's going to make it as very simple as possible. Because most of the Web3 lessons out there or blockchain sections out there are basically designed to be a little bit ambiguous and have plenty of grammars, you know, at attached to them. So try our best to make this very slim, short and understandable. So we're going to look at what are technical skills that are being attached to web developer? What does a developer need to move to web three? Although this section is focused on front end developers, but Everyone who writes code will definitely benefit to see what he or she can apply to existing skill sets to make it quite you know interactive and fun. We we'll also go to what are programming languages needed to go into Web3, what are libraries and other frameworks needed to go into Web3. Why we are that we're going to explain you know different angles that anyone can take that wants to come into Web3. So even as we're doing that, we'll definitely be looking at what blockchain is all about. Very simple definition of Web3 and blockchain that makes sense. What tools and platforms Web3 developers need that Web2 developers already have. And lastly, since you're talking about Web3, what are, how can we get Web3 jobs? So although this is focused on front end, yes, but everyone who writes code on the web space can definitely, you know, benefit from it. So let's get started. So the first thing that everyone needs to know is that becoming a blockchain developer or a three developer doesn't mean you have to drop everything web two. And I think it's something that I need to emphasize because most persons who think that they need to drop or stop doing Web 2 things before they move into Web 3. And that is quite misleading because, of course, you, you, you can't do Web 3 without first going to Web 2. So the current development space is in Web 2. And Web3 is an updated version of Web2, if you can call it that. We're going to see what Web3 means. But this point is point I want to actually tell, or, you know, basically say to everyone on the call that to become a Web3 person, you don't need to drop Web2. Web2 basically is the normal development space, you know, um, JavaScript, React, HTML, CSS, the rest, Django, and the rest of them. Just like we have the normal web development space where you have front end, back end, and you have the user at the end, 
Web 3 2 is still the same thing. There's a front end in Web 3, there's a back end in Web 3. So, Web 2 is similar to what Web 3 holds. So, if you are good in Web 2, it's likely you're going to understand what Web 3 is all about and begin to position yourself to be either Web 3 at the back end or Web 3 at the front end. So what is Web3 anyway? What is Web3 anyway? So if you ask different people um, about what is Web3, you're definitely going to get different answers. There's a joke I saw reading one um, newsletter. It says, if you ask 10 blockchain people what is blockchain, you get 10 different answers. So everyone has his own definition of blockchain and Web3. But we're going to find, do our best to find simpler answers to the questions of what Web3 is. The very simple conversation to define Web3 is that Web3 is simply a decentralized internet that no one has control over. What this means is that just like you have the, the usual web too, where Facebook, Twitter, and most of the other, you know, giants own your content. Uh, you upload your pictures, your data, they sell it at your back, they can manipulate your data without you even knowing about it. Web3 is securing those data. No one has control about your data, your videos, your text, your emails, your name. No one has control over that. So it's a more secure and decentralized internet where no single person can claim monopoly over your, over your data. And we've seen different you know, court cases and different Twitter drugs of companies like Facebook selling data behind our back or go tap it into our you know, privacy and all those things. Web3 discourages that. So nobody has control over your data so you can see that web 2 does not guarantee your data cannot be stolen but web 3 is trying to say that unlike web 2 in this place nobody has control over your data so web 3 is like an advanced version of web 3 that has been powered that is not powered by is powered by web blockchain rather so web 3 is powered by blockchain, which enables it to be decentralized. So we'll look at blockchain, yeah? So since we've said that Web3 is powered by blockchain, which enables data to be secure. So what is blockchain? So there are different, you know, uh, answers, different explanation of what Web3 blockchain is some are ambiguous some are understandable but in our conversation we try to make it as simple as possible we've analyzed and seen that web3 is basically a type of the internet where nobody has control over your data is secured nobody's you know is trying to control or manipulate your data no one has the authority to do that so this for this to happen it needs to be on the blockchain and uh, blockchain is powering Web3. Blockchain is technology that can be used for different use cases. Most of the use cases are all on the new internet called Web3. Web3 basically is a chain of blocks that contains information. So block and chain are two words that make up one word. So chain is like a sequence of data and block is that each are arranged in a sequential block that contains information. But if you're going to that, it could be quite, you know, um, what's the word, confusing. But to make it simpler, just understand that blockchain is a digital chain of blocks that contain information. And the idea behind blockchain is that each of these data information inside these chains, inside these blocks, blocks of chains are stamped digitally which means nobody can manipulate or backdate it or steal it or change it, it's stamped digitally. And if a change is being made to digital as in block, it affects other chains. 
So if you see a typical chain, it's kind of linked together. So all the information or data inside the blockchain are linked. If one data is tampered, it affects every other data. So everybody knows that something has happened to that digital document. So that is the whole idea around Web3 and blockchain. Web3 is controlling the way people assess data and nobody has control of it. And that is possible because it's powered by blockchain, which is a digital block of chain that contains information that nobody can easily tamper or backdate. Because if you change one, it affects other ones. We've seen that this blockchain is the reason why things like cryptocurrencies are possible. So it is used to secure the transfer of information, making sure information is secure as it goes from one hand to the other. And we have items like money, items like property. So money in this case, of course, cryptocurrency, digital money that nobody has control over to say you must pay certain fee for this to happen and it takes longer time to process. So it's faster and nobody controls that except the person sending the money and the person receiving the money. It secures property. That is why we have NFTs in the non fungible tokens. So we are stamping and making sure that fraud does not happen. Duplicates digital property does not emerge. Somebody says, okay, I'm selling this. And someone else brings another version actually fake. So this is actually how NFTs affect blockchain. And we're securing the transfer of data you know, between one digital property to the other. Contracts, we have smart contracts. So just like you have someone, you know, um, signing, agreeing a contract that says, you know, something has to happen. Someone signed on the spot, the other party signed on the spot. So probably tomorrow, the parties, one party can begin to be, begin to be dubious and change the agreement without the other person knowing. So smart contracts on the blockchain prevents that to happen. So if I change something in my contract, I must first, the two parties must agree. And of course, I get the fact that the change has happened. So all this tries to make the internet transparent which Web2 does not do. So the entire idea around Web3 and blockchain is to make internet transparent and less scary. Try to reduce fraud and of course, making sure that things are being secured in the internet. So it is almost impossible to hack or fake or try to you know, um, be dubious on a blockchain because it's, it's quite secure. So that is the entire overview of what Web3 and blockchain is all about. So developers who are still building you know, the usual Web2 solutions can begin to find a way to add Web3 skills to their you know, skill sets and eventually help to make internet a little bit secure. So the question is, what does it take to build for Web3? What does it take to build for Web3? Well, for one, if you're a front web developer, it takes basically your front end skills, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So remember that you know before you do Web3, we have to do Web2. We can go straight to Web3, but then it's going to be quite difficult. We have to go from the base of Web2. So just like you have version one, version two, version three, Web3 is a different version from Web2. So before you get to the other version, you have to have known the previous version. So web front end for web building web three applications you need to already have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript skills. You can of course go further with adding TypeScript. So you can actually get grounded for having frameworks like React, especially React, or perhaps Vue and Angular. So these are the entire front end stack to start from web two. So like I said, web three is a different version from web two, but you have to do web two before you go to web three. So these are the basic skill sets to learn on the web two space before you can begin to go back to web three. Just like you mentioned earlier, front web three has front end and back end. So if you want to go straight to the back end place without entirely doing front end, we can begin to learn Rust or Solana. Solana is a different blockchain and you can use Rust to build on the Solana chain. So that's 
the same thing as saying, okay, I can learn front end, I can learn Python for Django. So you could learn Rust as a programming language and to learn as a blockchain and become a back end person in Web3 space. Or you could go to Solidity, which is like the most common one, and then go to learning Ethereum to use Solidity to build on Ethereum. So you can choose which of this path to take. Either you want to go to the front end space or you want to go to the back end space. So if you want to go to front end, you have to start from your usual you know, web, web, web two space, which is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, React, Vue, and the rest. But if you want to go straight to back end, you know, trying to build smart contracts for front end persons to build, to consume, just like you have APIs, you can definitely go to Rust or Solana, um, or you go to Solidity, which is more popular, and Ethereum. But if you want to go to front end, like I mentioned, these are the, the like the basic web three, web two skills to have. Once you're done, how can you now become web three person? Well, you can take the back, just like you have the usual taking the API from the back end person to put in your front end. You can take the smart contracts, you can take the web three back end stuff on the back end people and consume on your front end. To make it possible, you need to learn some web three, you know libraries javascript to help you do that and there are two popular web3 libraries we have web3.js and eta.js anyone can work but most times some choose web etas above web3 so these are different libraries like you have libraries for different in javascript this is a library you need to learn it can help you connect smart contracts to your front end just like you also connect, you know, APIs to your front end. The reason why ETAS is, is more popular and better is because it's much smaller. It has little, uh, it's, it's faster because it's much smaller. It's not bulky. It has better documentation. People are using it better and there's always improvement as an open source library and it's more popular, of course. It's easier for beginners because the community, you can easily learn it, you know, with different either articles on blogs or YouTube, as, as the case may be. And it has extra features. You can, it has templates for you to use within the codes and the rest like that. So you can choose anyone, either it has a JS or whatever. We also have Alchemy. Alchemy looks like this. So it is a platform that helps anyone especially those on the front end space to easily find SDKs, APIs, and easily build Web3 development, you know, um, apps on the blockchain easily. So it has SDKs, it has different templates you can use to edit samples, demos you can use to easily, you know, manipulate your own use cases and use it. So you could try such it out. It's quite easy to use and it's entirely, you know, complex. So you already have your, 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 your normal, you know, HTML, CSS, React, or Vue, and you want to add Web3 features to it, you can definitely go to Alchemy, look for an SDK, look for a product, look for a sample template, a case study, and easily add it to your own use case and it becomes Web3 products. And that tool that we also need to know is called Remix. Uh, Remix is an online IDE for launching and building and testing smart contracts is heavily you know, supporting Solidity for the uh, Ethereum blockchain. So you don't need to be set up a, a laptop, sorry, a, a VS code for it. It's online, it's quick. Uh, most people use it easily to teach you know, online courses on and just you know, try to test their skill set online. So with this, you can, it's online, you can definitely host you know, test and deploy smart contracts on your code. But there are those who don't like, you know, the, the remix is online. And so they use tools like, you know, Hard Hat and Tuffle, which allows developers to bring smart contracts into their own local environment. So if you're used to VS Code, you can still have the Ethereum environment, you know, using Hard Hat or Tuffle. It can help you still build and launch smart contracts within your SD, so your normal local directory and local server without entirely doing it on Remix Online. But above all these two, I think one of the, the most favorite and easy to understand is Bonds. 
So bonds is like the Firebase for blockchain backend. So I know you know Firebase, yeah. So Firebase, it's it makes it easy for either Android developers or front end guys to do back end things without necessarily going to learn back end. So you can begin to, for example, as an Android person, if you don't want to go and learn Node.js or Django to be you know database, you can simply use Firebase for your storage for your authentication and other things you want to do so the same thing with bonds if you don't have the strengths or the muscle to go learn solidity to go learn rust or solana and all those things but you want to become a front end person in the web3 space you can use bonds so bonds makes it easy for anyone to deploy you know as template blockchain you know smart contracts you can use on your on your on your front end just to install the SDK and find templates you use, NFT marketplaces, uh, cryptocurrency tokens, just find the templates, deploy, and find the SDK to host on your front end, and you're good to go. So we're going to just show a basic demo, but we'll just do that later. But before we go forward, I just want us to understand that these are the most essential most essential and necessary tools that you need to know if you are updated version of web 2. If you don't need to leave web 2 for web 3, you can and use your existing web 2 skills to come to web 3. That's the best way to do it. And if you're really a front-end person who understands, you know, most of these case studies, you know, most of these things, you can definitely use Web3.js or ethers.js as your library to connect the back-end smart contracts to your front-end. You can use as SD, you can use Remix to test, to deploy, and she easily share smart contract codes online without having to set up your local directory for it. Hard hat and Tuffle makes it easy for you to take what you can do on Remix into your local directory. So if you can, if you want to use VS Code to deploy and build smart contracts, Hard hat and Tuffle makes it easier for you to set up an Ethereum-based environment you can use to test out what you want to test out. And Bonds, as you've seen, it's like the Firebase, but for blockchain backend. You can find templates, models, NFT marketplaces, cryptocurrency tokens, SDKs you can use to deploy and add to your front end. It makes it easy for you to do. We want to show a very simple demo on how that works with React. So at your own time, or for us in the community, we can definitely hold you know bigger and cleaner and clearer you know demos and use cases to show how we can use bonds to your front end skills. There's even cases where back end engineers use bonds to build APIs that Android guys use to deploy as well. So anything you can do with, with Firebase, bonds is trying to make it easier for developers to build, you know, uh, blockchain apps that necessarily going to learn about solidity or blockchain. It's quite tough for that. So you can still maintain your front end skills and add bonds to make it easier for you. So just to have a recap, a basic understanding of the basic flow of Web3. It's still the same thing. There's still a, a Web3 front-end developer. There's still a Web3 back-end developer. So you can decide to choose where you want to be. You can still use your existing front-end skills for front-end, but add, like we mentioned, either ETA.js or Web3.js to consume smart contracts on your front-end, like you consume API from, from back-end developers. You can become a back-end Web3 developer by learning, of course, blockchain, use smart contracts, and give the front-end persons to consume or APS to consume. So you can choose to be a full-stack Web3 developer by doing front-end and back-end together. So it's still the same flow. So you don't need to leave Web2 to come to Web3. You can still leverage your skills in Web2 and move gradually into Web3, as we've seen before.
three assistant developers. Nebit, we have smart contract programmer, clever programmer, eat the blogs, um, Etisha, and learn with 3 dao So these are classic web YouTube channels that can you can use to learn blockchain and web three development. I would have recommended Udemy, but Udemy as of the time of this uh this slide and study do, do not have a really up-to-date blockchain course they may have done it last week or yesterday but the last uh, from last week i couldn't find any updated you know blockchain or solidity current solidity programming courses on udemy but of course youtube's uh, youtube channels are always up to date sharing experiences so just try any of these on the screen clever programmer there are samples as a community that encourages you to build and of course helps you to make it uh, better of course and as gdg would definitely find would find ways to see how we can accommodate those who want to go to web3 by hosting occasional you know meetups occasional webinars and workshops that can help us see how we can begin to move over to to web3 so when you're done learning where do you find jobs so since Web3 is a new internet, like it's a new form of the internet, there are different places where you can find Web3 jobs that you may not find when you go to Web2 job listing platforms. So we have remoteok.com, we have web3.career, remote3.co, cryptojoblist.com. There are more, but these are my top four lists. Let, let's just briefly look at uh let's just briefly look at at bonds yeah just to show let me share my entire screen just to show how that works just a moment yeah this is bonds So bonds, it's for blockchain development. You don't actually need to go to learn solidity, blockchain development, and all that to begin to deploy. And so you can see that you can definitely, it's multi-chain, a polygon, Ethereum. This may not make sense to you, but if you gradually begin to follow documentation, and of course, you, you, the channels we talked about on YouTube, it begins to make sense. So if you look at the documentation, um, I do not want to basically sound too technical or boring here there's a lot of templates here so let me just sign it just show show something all right just a moment this one to sign into my account so i can show us something yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let's add. Let me share a different screen instead. Sorry, guys. All right, this is it. So this is how the the, the bonds dashboard looks like and you can see the button called create a, a dap which definitely means this is right application just dabs is the short form and when you click on it it just tells you the name so you just have to put my dab great sometimes uh bonds is being said to be the no code platform for blockchain development just like wordpress it's is no code for building and launching websites Bonds to, in a way, is no code, but for developers to do not have to worry themselves about writing too much code to deploy blockchain. So, um, Ricky Bitter, so this doesn't make sense to you. Just want to show how this works. We can definitely hold more sections to explain what this network test, Ricky P, and all this looks like. This is actually where it makes sense. So, you can choose to build a simple NFT marketplace. On your own from scratch but that could be a lot of headache we can simply use the template here to make it happen you want to launch a multi-token um, platform using the erc 115 or you want to have a simple token for cryptocurrency launch your own cryptocurrency 
uh, once we definitely have what we call ICO, initial coin offering. So these are template models you can use. We have two options, go and learn um, Solidity and build from scratch or use any of the templates here. You can see smart contracts at the, at the bottom, smart contracts, combined smart contracts. So all these are templates. So in example, we want to launch a smart contract. I click on it, yeah? I should select the kind of smart contracts I want, the templates. So I want to build, for example, uh, a marketplace that has auction NFT, just like OpenSea does. But I want to build just to mint NFTs. I can choose any of these templates that can work. So if I choose NFT IPM Mintable, it is used to mint NFTs. So I click on it. So I, I, I can see the code. There's a new feature added. I can see the code. So the codes, you can see the code on Solidity. So if you are already a developer on Solidity, you can definitely see what to change and edit your own use case. It's template already, already meant for you to easily build, um, already build smart contracts that can mint NFTs. But if you're okay with this, especially if you're a front end person that doesn't really want to go to all those, you know, uh, plenty, plenty protocols, you can just use it and leave it like that. So you just have to put the name. I just have my NFT and symbol. Should my NFT as well, no problems. So I deploy. So it's creating the DAP, right? So once it's done creating, You can show either with React, with that view with Angular. You can build a DAP, become a web page developer in minutes. So that's uh, just just a moment. So I'm is trying to get the gas fees. Oh, sorry, guys. I, I was I was muted. I had no idea.
Let me just uh, quickly fix this now. Okay, just a moment. All right, so I, I was showing us how to... How without writing plenty code it has to, as a sdk to your front end react view and all that so i'm just showing um how to launch a smart contract that helps you to mint nfts on your front end and i'm sure we didn't lose that that process but we'll definitely hold you know other sections uh before after now either next week or next two weeks to make it a little bit easier so when you're done you have the sdk So these are different models, functions, as the case may be. You can see we're not going to the SDK has its ID. So you take the, the SDK ID and you place on your, your React code. So if you just a moment, let me show you something that makes sense. The the SD, the the GitHub live the GitHub repo of bonds has YouTube that we can use. So I'm trying to show and find it, so it helps us to build better boiler plates exactly. Or right, just a moment, I'm trying to put that up GitHub. So we so let me show this. So this this has um it's actually the bonds GitHub library. GitHub repo rather that has different user uh, what's it called boiler plates you can easily use to add your front end code to mint NFT. So if you want to build NFT marketplace, you want to build anything that actually does anything with a smart contracts or cryptocurrency, you can find the boiler plate here. Yeah. So easily have like a, a starter code for you want to build. But for this use case, I just had to um, use that for building an NFT, sorry, a, 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 a DAP using React that means self fit into NFTs. So you can easily try and just play around the bonds, the bonds plates. So this is actually how, how it works. So of course, once you're done, Hello, just uh, to npm install to install up and run it. I want to just show us how this works. Okay, just uh, just now. Fine. So this is it, right? So I I had to I had to install the the boiler plate from the GitHub as I showed, and I had to run it. And it's actually how it looks like. So I'll definitely show uh, and and share the boiler. I'm using bonds to NFTs. So you can definitely take a picture. It's a very simple use case. We can definitely begin to think other use cases to use it to build a more usable um, platform. So this is with React. Of course, the normal HTML CSS are here. But then bonds SDK is added using the, the template smart contracts.
so we have um so let me just try it out with us now so the, the token name is just uh, let's just use trust description trust picture yeah Let me just refresh this so that I start from the here. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm just your trust. And what's your trust picture? All right, so I click this is actually black. My camera is being used by the stream yard. So we we'll click on it and it, it's it takes the picture and you click on mint. It begins to mint and send the image into energy storage which is the, the basic place where most NFTs are being stored. Just like you have your Firebase for storage in, for st storing um, normal data, but to store NFTs, you use NFTs of storage. So it's minting. So once it mints, it becomes an NFT. It can begin to retrieve the NFT. So this case can be used to build a simple uh, NFT marketplace if you wish to, without writing plenty code. So if I, the ID, token ID is 14. If I click on 14 and do get it just comes alive and of course trust picture is also shown so that is basically how bonds work and it can use to begin to build a very simple and of course more complex you know web3 solutions on your front end if you don't have to begin to to build and learn all those difficult languages around that so have a recap, we've definitely decided that Web 2 and Web 3, the only difference is a number. And of course, Web 3 is kind of internet where nobody owns your network. Facebook, Twitter, all run on Web 2 technology where they can easily sell our data without us knowing. There's no privacy. Web 3 is heavy on privacy. Nobody owns our data. That's the whole concept of Web 3. And blockchain is powering that, you know, new revolution of the internet. As a developer, how can you contribute? You can contribute by staying on the front end or staying on the black on the back end. If you want to stay on the back end, you definitely need to go to learn Rust and Solana for building smart contracts and giving to front end person to consume. Just like you have learning API and giving fun a guys to consume. It's an Ethereum and give to guys to also consume. Now, if you're front end person that wants to come to Web3, you don't need to stop your, your Web2 things. You can still do your HTML, CSS, you know, TypeScript, React, and Vue, and still become Web3 person. But you have to add things like ETA.js, Web3.js to also consume the smart contracts that those on the back end are giving you. So, so that is basically how that looks like. And we've definitely begin, began to see what other tools can help you, like Alchemy, like Remix, if you are not seeing managing projects in Web3, become web three designer, there are different different roles. The same roles you have in web two, applicable in web three and extra. So we can't necessarily have to drop web two to become web three person. You can learn that in on YouTube, um, like you shared on, on the screen. And you can discuss we can definitely discuss later on either the WhatsApp group or either the Slack channel or on the Facebook group. You can send an email at trust at bonds, talk about bonds, how bonds can help you build more uh, marketplaces, NFTs, how to build more dApps or play solutions without killing yourself writing plenty codes. Okay, I definitely am I'm heavily space to build better solution. So I don't have any question. I can see about um, 12 persons on the call. So we have any questions. So you can drop your questions now, or you could drop your questions. Let me look at the charts. Yeah. You can drop your questions now. 
or you can drop your questions much later on the WhatsApp group or have any questions any, any confusions around the entire in you know, a web3 space or discussed about today or blockchain in general yeah hi sopro chuku good evening uh i can see rusty some dev and michael is you go out here how are you doing Thank you very much, guys. Just a moment. Let me bring in. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Okay, Mr. Trust, thank you very much. That was a very wonderful presentation. Uh, I don't know whether, though I believe there should be a lot of questions and uh, though most people might still be finding it difficult to send their questions but if you have a question, you can easily follow up. That will still drop the social media handles later on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. Then you can also drop your questions there so that Mr. Trust can always attend to you. So I don't know. I think. Uh, yeah, we have a question. There's a question on, on the screen. Can you see it? Yes. It says, I want to just ask if Bond supports Rust on Solana. All right. So, so for now, for now, heavily focused on most of the uh, Ethereum friendly blockchain. But in the future, we will. We will. Although we, we have been, we have um, support for most of the chains like, um, polygon but we were yet to, to go into solana at, at the moment but very soon we'll, we'll definitely do that very soon i'll definitely take the feedback to to the team and we'll find a way to and are you develop all right um can you see that ben benjamin the the, the reply you can read that, please. Okay, I think uh, I'll definitely go ahead. I will definitely um, the WhatsApp. Um, let me let me find a way to share it now. I don't know if I can or can't. I, are you on the GDG newsletter? I will definitely share the link to WhatsApp group there after the call. Or tell Ben Damage to do that so you can join the WhatsApp group. We can join this uh, this discourse group on the screen. That's uh, let me just type it out here quickly. That is where you're definitely going to find me and other bonds. Uh, um, to easily move on. Our uh, network is actually bad. Or uh, I don't know if you had my 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 reply to that. I'll share the WhatsApp group to the GDG group on news, news, via the newsletter. And I would um, also share um, the link to Discord on the on the group, oh, sorry, on this chat now, and then we'll see how far that can go. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see the other question on, on the screen. Time to say goodbye to the events. Someone asked another so, question, so is there going to be a recording? Yeah, yes, there will be a recording and copyright There will be a recording.
YouTube channel. So I've mentioned, and you can definitely keep yourself updated. So we'll hold, we'll definitely begin to find ways to, to hold, um, more frequent, not just about web three, but like entire development space so that everybody can just get updated and get to find new ways to improve their skill set as well. So yeah, that, that's about that. The recording can, can still be found after this ends. Okay, I don't know if there's any other question. No, no, there's no other question. Okay, in absence of question, um, I want to thank you very much for the wonderful time and all the people that joined us live. My name is Benjamin Okichuku. I'm the program manager at GDG Abba. So I want to officially inform everyone that Google I.O. is coming, Google I.O. extended. It's coming up on the first week of July. And we expect that all of you will join. This year's event is going to be physical and virtual. So they will not be able to conclude on the exact location. But we believe with time, we're going to communicate that across everybody. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Mr. Truss, for your time. That was a very wonderful one. We'll try and uh, see how we can organize some physical classes. Because I believe this requires a lot of practice. Because I know there are a lot of people who want to go into the Web3 space. And this platform is a very wonderful one. I really love that. So thank you so much for your wonderful time. Thank so you. So if there's any other, if there's any other question, uh, I can always forward that to you. Though I believe you're always online. So if anybody drops on any of the platform, you always see that. If anybody has sends to me, then I can still pass it across to you. Thank you all for joining, and have a nice night rest. <laughs>